Okay, we got to get to work. No, you don't. Yeah, you no, go no, see. No, 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 you don't drool on me. You already drooled on me. Hi, I'm dad. Steve Thompson, president of Emory Thompson Machine. I'm Christy Brown, vice president of sales and marketing, and this one is just drooled everywhere. <laughs> That's her favorite thing to do. <laughs> well, then, while you're recovering from the drool, why don't I start off? Okay. Um, this is one of these, uh, you can't teach, speaking of dogs, you can't teach an old dog new trick, but maybe you can. Hey, Steve, good morning. As I sip my morning coffee, thoughts turn to ice cream. I wanted to ask you if you've ever made ice cream with olive oil. It hmm. seems to be a trend. Any formulations on the CB350, or maybe it's not worth the time. Any experience with this at all? Any help would be greatly appreciated. Hope all is well. Andy, I had, that was, Andy, it's a Crave Frozen Desserts. I had no idea about putting olive oil into ice cream. And actually, as I did my research, you don't put it into the ice cream, you put it on top of the ice cream. It seems to be something that is uh, quite common in Italy. Uh, I'm just not as world-traveled as other people. Uh, but uh, that's something that they do, and it is starting to catch on over here. Uh, just a high-grade olive oil, olive oil poured over uh, a vanilla ice cream. Uh, it's supposed to enhance the flavor. It does make the product smoother and creamier. And uh, why not? I do a lot of cooking and uh, always prefer a very good olive oil as opposed to any other type of cooking oil. So I plan to try it one night. Yeah, Just I wonder kinda... if you could put a side of Popeye spinach. Olive it... oil and Popeye? Ew. That's Did very you funny. Yes, I get it. Uh, uh, <laughs> okay, you take over. <laughs> <laughs> I had the question of what flavors should I make homemade ice cream or super premium ice cream? That is a very good question. I kind of feel that's more of a preference for you. So my thoughts would be your basic flavors like strawberry, chocolate, vanilla should do just plain basic homemade ice cream. That gives you 100% overrun. Uh, and then you can take your fancy flavors like butter pecan, candied maple bacon and make those a super premium. Now keep in mind, when you run super premium, you're gonna get a lot less out. Well, not a lot less, but you're gonna get less out. And those tend to be higher in price because you're not getting your full yield. So that's, to me, I think it's a preference. And as Steve always says, nobody's gonna come back because you had fantastic air content. They're gonna come back <laughs> because right. you had a great flavor. So I would just stick with homemade. You're gonna get double your, your product back out and that means more profits for you. All right. Uh, this one just came in a few minutes ago. Um, Tim Turner from Kingdom Made Treats. Mm -hmm. Kingdom sent me a great t-shirt. I love it. No, I didn't get one. Well, he sent it to me. Well, fine then. Well, <laughs> anyway, he did compliment you. Oh, thanks. Yes, he did this weekend your dill pickle Italian ice. Oh, did And he? said it was spectacular. <laughs> Everybody went, ew, at the name, and then they tried it and they loved it. I like it. I believe he's in Texas, but I'm not certain of that. Uh, anyway, uh, Tim's question was uh, about uh, flavoring uh, for Italian ice. Uh, this is something, uh, making ice cream flavors, like mm -hmm. he was looking at Nutella, and we talked about some other Italian ice flavors, but how do you do it when you do an Italian ice? Dairy product, uh, when you drink a glass of milk, it has flavor. Water has no flavor. So uh, this came actually from, uh, this knowledge came from Ralph's up in Staten Island, and uh, he is the first one that I know who really went uh, full out on doing ice cream flavors with an Italian ice base. And we have talked about this a little bit before. But just so you know, the secret to it is since water has no flavor, you're going to double the formula. If you have one of my ice cream formulas, uh, I have uh, lavender chocolate chip is one. There's uh, 522 of these videos at emerythompson.com, YouTube videos. And each one, you can open it up and watch us make a flavor, Christy or me or tie-dye Jeff. And the uh, formula, our formulas are there. And all you do, if you want to make, uh, say, a salted caramel and turn it into an Italian ice, is double all the flavor. One last thing, uh, ice cream, I firmly believe the flavor doesn't totally enhance until it's after been frozen. Italian ice is what you see is what you get. So you can mix everything up in a bucket and stir it up, taste it, cold water, sugar, and your flavor. Taste it and see how it is. If it's bland, add a little more flavor. On the CB350, uh, I was telling Tim that for ice cream, I'd probably put in uh, a pint uh, of flavor. I'd probably put in close to a quart 
uh, if I was doing the Italian ice. And it's that simple. Give it a try. Uh, chocolate chip uh, Italian ice uh, and Oreo cookie Italian ice are fantastic. And see, I, I'm different on that. If it's Italian ice, nothing but fruits. Don't be putting no fudge brownies in my Italian ice. What did I say about an old dog and new tricks? Well, call me an old dog then. <laughs> Uh, my next one is, what is the difference between single-fold and two-fold vanilla? Uh, single-fold, obviously, um, let me read off my little notes here. The single-fold um, vanilla contains alcohol and beans. The two-fold has twice the amount of vanilla beans um, extracted from it, making it two times stronger. Um, they're both going to taste the same at the end result. Obviously, you would use more of the single-fold and less of the two-fold, but they're both the same vanilla. Um, I think Jeff went over that one time. He said, or the two of you had an argument mm -hmm. about it. That's what yes. it was. Yeah. <laughs> we have an argument over everything. Yeah, that's just about it. That's about it. So the two-fold's going to be more expensive to purchase, and you'll have to use a little bit less. So I guess it really just goes for me and be storage space. Do you want a two-fold in a bottle this big and use the same amount, or you want a single-fold of bottle of vanilla that big and use more of it at a time? I think Jeff would say, don't worry about the cost. Just make the very best you can, and they will come. Yeah, and he and still uses so the cheap vanilla. Yeah, unless it's here. And then he uses <laughs> yeah. my... And then he glug, glug, glugs uses, it. Yeah, yeah. My, my good stuff. Yeah. <laughs> um, here is from uh, Rich. And Rich says, I have owned a CB350 for about six months and have been extremely satisfied with it. We're starting to make our own ice cream mixes and have been chilling it before making the ice cream. Question is, is it okay to put hot liquid into the machine to make ice cream? If not, then at room temperature so we don't have to ice it. Um, very, very, very good question. Um, back to uh, the best flavor, uh, I feel, along with other dairies, that uh, if you are making your own mix and you chill it overnight, the flavor is going to be enhanced. It's all going to be put together, especially if you're doing a chocolate. If you're using a Forbes, Benjamin P. Forbes chocolate, um, and you've talked to Cherish Matthews and ordered that up. Uh, it's a very fine powder, and if you mix that the night before, it's going to be better tomorrow. But once you've got the product, once you've made your own uh, dairy product and your own pasteurizer, uh, can you put it hot into the machine? I don't recommend it. Uh, not that the machine isn't capable of taking very, very warm liquids. We don't want something so hot your hand would pull away. Uh, but the way uh, our cylinders are so thick, there's no problem there. But the problem is, it's going to take so much longer to freeze. You're going to have to pull down from 80 degrees down to 20, as opposed to uh, 33 or 34 down to 20. And all that extra mixing is going to change the air content. If you're mixing it that long, you're just imagine you're whipping it for that much more time. So I would say no. Uh, chill the mix. Uh, if you're going to try to save time, room temperature is better than putting it in hot. But the cooler you get that mix, the faster your freeze time and the smaller your ice crystals will be. Is that it for us? No. You I got still another? have one more. Oh, go for it. Where can I find a really nice push cart? So we have a very sweet couple that we know, or uh, friends are a couple, not positive which one. Um, and they have a business called Unique Vending Carts. They have literally every push cart you can imagine from plugging in to one that you can put, uh, put on a generator. They have ones with cold plates for paletas. They have it for anything that you can think of. They can ship internationally, uh, domestically. They're customizable. Uh, I think their email uh, is sales at uniquevendingcarts.com. I'll confirm that so Ken can put that up there for you guys. They're also on our key supplier list, and they're going to be at um, the National Ice Cream Show. I still don't know the acronym for it, the new I one. I don't either. It used to be NICRA, but now it's North American something. Yeah, Ni NIACA. So one of those. They'll be there, and so will we. And that's about all we have for today. I see you've been practicing your Spanish. You uh, said paletas like it rolled off the tongue. I always pronounce all of the, the <laughs> words correctly, and then you guys will make fun of me. Like, doce de leche, paletas. That's what, how you pronounce it. <laughs> we'll see you next time. Bye, guys. Bye.